What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I want to show you guys how to set a static IP address in Ubuntu Server 20.04. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I want to walk you guys through setting a static IP address for Ubuntu Server 20.04. Now Ubuntu Server uses NetPlan uh, for the network configuration by default. And I believe they implemented that around 18.04 or 17.04. Somewhere in there, they implemented NetPlan as the default network configuration. And in order to configure a static IP address on your server, you need the IP address, the network mask, the gateway, and the DNS name server addresses. So let me go on and get started and walk you guys through how to actually set this up. Okay, cool. So I'm logged in via SSH to a Ubuntu server 20.04. And the first thing we need to do is find the network interface name that we want to configure and set the static IP address on. And the way you do that is by using the IP command, which I just recently did a video. That's actually my last video. So I'll link it in the description of the video so you guys can check that out if you don't know how to use the IP command. But the command is IP and then A. And this will give us all the network interfaces as well as the IP addresses for those interfaces. And this is the interface that we want to use. This one right here is the loopback address. Uh, just ignore that, but this is the interface for the network core for this VM. And what you want to do is note that name because we're going to need it in the configuration file. So I'll just copy it. And now we have to make sure that the network interface is not managed by the cloud in it, which is another piece of software that sometimes is enabled, especially on Ubuntu. Uh, so you just want to verify that that this is disabled because it'll control the network interface. And the command to do that, we actually have to nano into the configuration file. So let's go sudo nano. And then this configuration file is under etc and then cloud and then cloud config.d and then this configuration file. And we can go into it right fast and edit it. And really, all you want to do is verify that it's disabled. And if this said enabled right here, then you just want to change it to enabled. And as you can see, it's disabled on mine, so we don't have to do anything because it's already disabled. So let's hit Control C. I mean, I'm sorry, Control X and close that file. Now that we verify that the cloud init is not enabled, let's go on in and set our system up to have an IP, have a static IP address. And the way you do that is by going into the YAML file, the YAML configuration file for NetPlan. So we have to use nano again or whatever text editor you want to use. So sudo nano and then etc and then NetPlan. And then I'm going to just tab it out so you guys can see it should be one file in there. And if that file is not located there, you can always generate it. I'll show you guys that command in a second as well. But let's go in and let's go it on and modify this configuration file. And right now, as you can see, it's set up to work using DHCP. So it'll just automatically pull the IP address from the DHCP server, which is my router for this system. So the best way I've always found is just to delete everything that's here. Uh, and I probably could have left that network one there, but that's fine. But I want to show you guys how to fully write it out because the YAML language is... A little bit difficult and if you don't put the indentions properly then netplan won't be able to read the configuration file so i just want to show you all the spaces and everything when it comes to writing out and setting the static ip address so first thing you want to do is type network and then colon and this is setting up the network so we press enter and i always use two spaces to do the indention so if we go one, two, you know, for the two spaces, next thing we want to type is version and colon, and it's going to be version two. And if we press enter there, let's space twice there and type ethernet. And it's actually ethernet. So just make sure you spell it properly. And then colon, and we can go down to the next line and the next 
line is going to be indented in. So as you can see, you know, next to Ethernet, you're just basically letting it know that you have more than one thing that you're going to put under Ethernet. So if we go space space to take it right under the E and then go space space again, that's a the indention for the interface. So this is where we want to put the interface. So if we press paste, we already have that copied. So and we put a colon there and then we can go down to the next line. So now let's just go right under the E and then do two spaces. So one space space. And then now we can type in the address. So let's type addresses and then colon. And then now we want to go down and put our IP address that we want to set as a static IP address. And you have to put it in the brackets and it's just the regular bracket. So you just put one open bracket, then the IP address. I already know what the IP address is on my network. So 192.168. Dot 10 and then I want to use 150. No, actually, let me use 50. And then we also have to put sub the subnet mask, which is 24. And then let's put a closing bracket there and press enter. And the next thing you want to do is put underneath this the address is the gateway. So let's go right to the gateway and you have to type gateway four and then type colon. And now we can put the gateway. So 192.168.10 and one. So that's my gateway on my network. And you don't have to put it in brackets. And the reason you have to put it in brackets up here is it has this uh, slash in there. So in order for YAML to recognize the slash, you have to put it in brackets. And that'll let it know it's, you know, it's subnet mass after the IP address. So you have to put it in brackets. And then also when you have like commas and different things like that, you have to put that in brackets as well. So let's press enter and go to the next line. And now we want to go into the net to the name servers or DNS servers. So if we go here under gateway and type name servers, all one word and then colon. And then we want to go to the next line and then we want to indent this line, which is addresses again. But these are the name server addresses. So we need to indent this. So one, two, and then type addresses. And then we have to put a colon just like before. And then we have to put, if you want to put more than one name server, then you want to put it in brackets. So we're going to start with that open bracket because I'm going to put my local DNS servers because I have a local DNS server that, that's not accessible outside my network. So I'm going to just put that there anyway. So 192.168.10.3 and then if you want to put more than one DNS server, then you can put a comma there. And what I'm going to do is put Cloudflare's DNS servers on here. So 1.1.1.1. And let's put another comma there and a space. And then let's go 1.0.0.1. And then we need to close the brackets at that point. Boom. Now we pretty much done with setting up the, the YAML configuration file. So... Let's go control control X and then type uh, Y to save it. Press enter and we're good to go. Now let's make sure the configuration file is actually configured properly. And the way you do that is by running a simple command is sudo net plan try and press enter. And this will actually test that configuration file. So just give it a minute. It should pop up with, with a response if the configuration file is configured properly. And just give me a second. I forgot that whenever you do the try command, it will kill your network connection. So I'm going to switch over to the actual virtual machine and show you guys that. So let me hide the terminal and pop up the virtual machine. And let's go on and test out uh, NetPlan again so you guys can see what it actually shows. So if we go sudo NetPlan and then try and press enter, as you can see, it'll stop system D network and not service, but it can still be activated by system D network socket, 
do you want to keep these settings? And you have to say something before this timer goes out or it'll revert back to the previous configuration. So if we press enter here, uh, that'll let you know that the configuration was accepted. So the changes that we made in that configuration file, that YAML configuration file, uh, are good to go. They have no syntax errors. So now that we know it doesn't have any syntax errors, we can change it permanently by running another command. And the command to do that is sudo netplan apply. And if we press enter on that, that will actually make the changes permanently. So when you reboot the system, uh, it'll use what's in the netplan YAML configuration file. So let's go on and reboot the system. That way we can verify that our static IP address has been set. So let's go sudo shutdown. And let me show you a different command though, because in Ubuntu server, you can actually, I, I'm so used to running shutdown, the shutdown command that I always forget about the reboot command. So let's go sudo reboot and that'll, you know, handle the same exact thing. It'll reboot the system, but I've always, I guess I'm old school. I'm used to using that shut down command but you can you know just type reboot and it'll it'll reboot the system so let's wait until it comes up and should be able to test and make sure it has that new ip address that we set for it okay cool so the system is up let's go down and log into it press enter and all I'm gonna pretty much do is run IP dash I mean A again, space A again. And this will show the, us the interface as well as the IP address that's set. And as you can see, the new IP address is set to 192.168.10.50, which is what we set in the YAML file. So we are good to go. And we can also look at the route by typing IP route uh, show. And we press enter, we can see the route that the D and you can see that the default gate but gateway is 192.168.10.1, which is what we set in the YAML file as well. So we are good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys got some out of it. You know what I'm saying? Because this will, you know, help you if you're trying to set up like a web server or something and you want to make sure. Uh, the server has a static IP address or it doesn't change on your network. So when you set up port forwarding, it always knows where that server is because it has that same IP address. And when you port forward, you have to put that IP address in there and you can host websites from your, from your house. So please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave a, leave a comment down in the comment boxes below. And of course, keep it techie.